What's wrong with a wooden club, eh? Whatever happened to the slingshot? Bring back the boomerang. Although I guess it'll do that by itself. Several decades into the world of video gaming, it seems at this point as though every conceivable weapon design has been done ten times over. We've got games literally branded entirely around sniper rifles. We've swung enough medieval swords to build two and a half iron thrones. And even an old hat is getting old hat. As a result, those hard-working developer boys and girls have had to think further and further outside of the box in order to keep their armoury looking interesting. So far outside the box, in fact, that the box is a mere distant memory. We've been hiking for eight weeks now, three of our party have succumbed to frostbite, and at this rate, we may have to eat Sir Farnsworth. Anyway, I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are ten ridiculously over-the-top video game weapons. Number 10, a series of impractical swords. Something of a wo 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 wild card entry to start with, because while the rest of the entries in this list are all individual weapons, I figured I should begin by killing several giant sword birds with one ridiculously over the top stone. We get it, Cloud. You have a pitifully small willy. Super small, like some sort of medical marvel. New Scientist magazine keep writing you letters asking if they can feature your small willy in an article about the smallest willies in the world and put your willy somewhere in the top top three smallest willies. And you lot, god, don't you have anything better to do than obsess over a sword hand forged from actual giblets? This thing is the size of a person and has literally got its own eye. It probably qualifies for human rights. I, I have so many questions. What is the eye for? What happens if you poke the eye? Will the eye gradually get weaker over the years and have to start wearing glasses? Also, the gun blade. It's a gun, it's a blade, and if you were the owner and noticed it was becoming slightly less effective, how would you know whether to sharpen it or just reload? Put it away. Number 9, The Blitzkrieg, Dead Rising 2. Fittingly, zombie horror as a genre can feel a little stagnant at times in that it's been done to death, brought back to life by way of black magic or bioterrorism, and then shotgunned in the head until it stopped moving. In Dead Rising 2, however, and indeed the rest of the series, it was a welcome change to be faced with a sea of brain-chomping shamblers and not have to think, mm, I hope I've got enough green herbs left, oh golly my pistol's nearly empty. Instead, with an enormous shopping complex at your disposal, you're invited to stick everything together with gaffer tape and be a generally silly boy. The resultant arsenal includes all manner of ludicrous items, but surely at the top of the podium is the machine gun equipped wheelchair that is the Blitzkrieg. This has got to be one of the most excessive MacGyver style craftable weapons in all of video gaming. It doesn't get much sillier than someone deciding the best way for me to deal with this zombie infestation is to sit in an electric wheelchair, attach three, count them, three assault rifles and go as far as to program the voice synthesizer to taunt my targets at regular intervals. Take this, you ugly son of a Number 8, The Penetrator, Saints Row the 3rd. Probably the least deadly weapon in this list, but arguably the most intimidating, The Penetrator of Saints Row the 3rd infamy is a meter-long sex toy attached to the handle of a baseball bat. It's available in a stylish cyan, a daunting purple, or even candy cane stripes for a more festive insertion. It boasts some rather disturbing flop physics as well. It's just really silly. The Penetrator might actually seem a relatively simple weapon next to the likes of the Sharkmatic, which covers enemies in fish guts to attract a terrifying sewer shark, but the giant dildo makes the cut simply for exemplifying everything that sets Saints Row apart from other open world action games. It's brutal, it's immature, it's a goddamn meter long phallus on a stick. Number 7, The Lancer, Gears of War. Hi everyone, I'm home. Hi honey, how was your day as one of the lead designers for the upcoming 2006 third person shooter game, Gears of War? Tough day, to be honest. We think we've got an interesting story, some cool enemies, a really nifty cover system, but the publisher's insisting we come up with some sort of awesome weapon, something that could be really iconic, you know. We've tried everything, orbital lasers, grenades on chains, but they're still not happy with any of it. I just don't know what I'm gonna do. Anyway, what did you do today, Tommy? I drawed a gun what has a chainsaw on it. That would never work, you idiot child. Number six, gunchucks, bayonetta. Some things just don't go together no matter how good they are on their own. 
ice cream and pizza, dick and deck, javelin and horse racing. Yeah, actually, I, I would watch that. And then there's Bayonetta's gunchucks. They're guns, but also nunchucks. That's not a good idea. It was actually quite difficult to choose just one weapon from Bayonetta. This is the lady who, let's not forget, shoots people with her heels and performs takedowns with her hair. However, the eventual conclusion was that sticking a revolver on the end of a flail and swinging it round 19 to the dozen is a brilliantly efficient way to shoot everything on your do not shoot list and then smack yourself in the jaw with a gun butt. Stupid, stupid weapon. Number five, the tactical nuke, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. We're halfway through the list now, and we've already seen some truly ludicrous armaments, the likes of which gamers could never have predicted. But you know, despite it being far more conventional than the above, something I'd call equally excessive is the fact that if you get a kill streak of 25 in Modern Warfare 2, your commanding officer authorizes an actual nuclear bomb to be dropped onto the battlefield, all with the intention to win a battle against, what, a team? of a dozen enemy soldiers. The best part, of course, is the match will immediately end in a victory for the team launching the bomb, which means Modern Warfare 2's tactical nuke is essentially just an enormous, radioactive golden snitch. Number four, Big Boy Merv, Fallout 4. This is not the nickname for a fat man called Mervin. While we're on the subject of nuclear warheads, once upon a time there was a Fallout 4 weapon called the Fat Man that was able to launch projectiles known as mini nukes. Why anyone living in a hopelessly depressing nuclear wasteland would think that detonating yet more nuclear bombs was in any way a good idea is anybody's guess, but we'll just take it as read. Then, because the Fat Man survived to an age at which it could reproduce, it gave birth to a special special legendary fat man called the Big Boy that could shoot two mini nukes at once. The Big Boy then encountered the experimental Merv weapon mod, that's multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle. When applied to a regular fat man, the Merv allows one mini nuke to decluster into six even minier nukes. Therefore, when attached to the Big Boy himself, who, let's remember, launches two mini nukes, the result is a full Vault Dweller's dozen of warheads going off all at the same time. I don't I don't know what comes after this, but I'm guessing it's a weapon that fires an entire society of self-sufficient mini-nuke citizens who come out of their little mini-nuke houses, hop into their mini-nuke cars, drive to mini-nuke work, and then come home again at the end of the day and watch mini-nukes got talent. Number three, Mr. Toots, Red Faction Armageddon. Mr. Toots. Mr. Toots is a small unicorn, uh, my, my Little Pony bazooka, um, with a, like a, a bum rainbow like, it's Red Faction, but it's, it's Mr. Toots. I mean, oh, that's graphic, okay. Number two, Pandora, Devil May Cry 4. Devil May Cry and Bayonetta are cut from the same cloth, for sure. First cousins in the over-the-top hack-and-slash family tree. And much like with Bayonetta, I hesitated for some time before I was able to definitively choose Dante's craziest weapon. After much deliberation, though, it had to be... Pandora. A relatively innocuous looking briefcase, I know, but as you might expect, there's a little more at play here. The in-universe description of Pandora is that it's a demonic case able to transform into 666 different weapons, which seems like way too many. Only a handful of Pandora's forms are actually usable in the game, but they're all as bonkers as you'd probably want them to be. Chunky-ass Gatling gun, impossibly large triple-barreled over-the-shoulder rocket launcher, and a whole actual flying vehicle completely ringed with missiles for her pleasure and yours. How deep is this case? It's like Mary Poppins has joined Kingsman. And number one, the Concrete Donkey, the Worms series. Surely one of the main reasons the Worms series has outlasted so many others is its totally absurd arsenal. And while you could debate the most over-the-top and iconic item of the series for hours on end, one of the main contenders has to be the Concrete Donkey, which when deployed will fall from the heavens and bore its way through the world, stopping at nothing until it sinks into the ocean. Best of all, the name isn't just a weird way of saying donkey statue. This thing is literally a real-life donkey that has been coated in concrete. We know this partly because it can be heard braying as it beelines for the molten core of the earth, but also because of its origins. This painfully low-res photo, of which there is no better version, I'm afraid, shows the original concrete donkey that stood in the garden of Worms creator Andy Davidson's childhood home. According to the in-game encyclopedia, 
media of Worms World Party, his parents used to get their kicks by telling him it was a real donkey they'd encased in stone. And of course, the next logical step for young Andy was to go on to create a video game and turn the statue into a WMD. Alleluia, I guess. <laughs> And that's our list, but let us know in the comments if we missed anything out, I'd love to hear your suggestions. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and if you want to support the things you enjoy, then check out the rewards on our Patreon, they're lovely! Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel, you know you want to. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.